Let's take a look at this pen, illustrating the planetary model of an atom. We have an SVG element, which is empty. Its content is generated with React, and since I know nothing about React, I'm just going to inspect element and uh, see what's, uh, get, what uh, gets generated. So, as expected, we have a circle in the back, representing that big disk behind. And then we have a group with six path elements. The first half have a trail back class, and each one of these represents uh, one of the dotted lines. The next half have a trail class, and each one of these represents one of the continuous lines. There's not much we can do in terms of reducing uh, the number of elements, but uh, we could, let's say, uh, take the D attribute from the second and the third element and um, put it into the D attribute of the first element. And this way we could get rid of the second and the third elements. And remove this one and remove this one as well. Oh no, I've duplicated it. Instead of removing it, don't do that. Okay, so we can do the same for the second half. Just compact all three of them into just one. And then we have two path elements instead of two. But this isn't, isn't helping, isn't helping at all when it comes to making the code easier to understand just at a glance. Because you can see, I select the path element here, and what I get highlighted is just a rectangle, the bounding box. I don't see the individual points. Let's say, for example, the point we start at, the, mo the move to point. I don't see it highlighted. I don't see the last point, the end point of the um, elliptical arcs. I don't see those. And I wish I could see them. I wish I could see uh, the radii for the elliptical arcs highlighted. I wish I could see control points for Bezier curves, if we have those. Or, you know, points for line 2 and stuff like that. But I can't. And it would be really useful to have those. Because, for example, I could drag those points. And dragging them changes their coordinates. And then if their coordinates also change in DevTools then that would be immensely useful and it would make understanding these uh, shapes a lot easier. But currently no browser does this in DevTools. So what we could do is replace the path elements with simpler elements like ellipse elements. So let's see, actually we're going to have just one ellipse elements and five copies. So we have an SVG and then we have an ellipse element and what we do now is set the dimensions for the SVG element so this is 1000 because that's how it is in the original demo so um, now the coordinates of the top left uh, corner which are minus half minus 0.5 times D so now we set a view box And this is an array. First two are the coordinates of the top left point, equal. And then the dimensions, also equal. And then we join this array. And now, moving on to our ellipse. We have the first radius, we call it A. And this is 0.4, the dimension. And the second radius, we call it B. And this is a third of the first radius. So let's now set them. And we have the radius along the x-axis, A. And the radius along the y-axis, we set it to B. And let's see the result. So this looks fine there. And what I don't like is all those decimals, because we don't really need them. And this is the mark of automatically generated code. It doesn't matter uh, if we're using a preprocessor or uh, if it was uh, generated with JavaScript. If I see a lot of decimals, I know that code was automatically generated because nobody is insane enough to write all those decimals, especially since they're not really needed. Well, they're not needed in this case. So we have the ellipse, but we need to create copies. So um, we have one, two, three ellipse um, elements, right? So this is going to be n c is 3. But the ellipse also um, is going to uh, represent the first dotted line. 
so we only need two more dotted lines. So that's um, 3 minus 1. So now let's create the copies within a loop. You might say it's stupid to use loop for something this simple, but in case we had more copies or stuff like that. So, um, one. And this copy references our ellipse. So we need to give our ellipse an ID. And now we need to rotate these copies. And the rotation angle depends um, on the number of um, elements we have. So it's going to be 360 over, and this is um, the base angle. So this is the base angle. And we need to apply a transform, which is rotate. And we interpolate here the base angle. But uh, we want this to be uh, plus minus 120 degrees. So um, we're going to switch the sign depending um, on uh, NC1. So this is going to be So now we have um, what we wanted, but it doesn't look like this. So um, let's take care of the appearance a bit. Uh, so this is not going to have a fill. Oh, none. And we're going to give RSVG a stroke. And you can see that all those ends are rounded, so we're going to uh, set a stroke uh, line cap as well. So, um, trail back. This is what we want. Here. And we're, um, not this. Stroke line cap. And this is going to be round, right, and we also set a stroke width. And uh, point 0.1, point 0.01, the dimension. So now this should look better. But what we want is to have um, a dotted line. And we do this with stroke dash ray on the SVG. And any stroke properties we set on the SVG get inherited for uh, all the elements inside. So for the ellipse, for its copies, and everything. But everything we have we set on the ellipse um, gets transmitted to the copies, and we can't change. Which is why we don't set stroke dash array on the ellipse itself, because then we want to have um, those continuous lines with a different stroke dash array. And uh, if we were to set this on the ellipse itself, then we couldn't change it on its copies. So this is why we set it on the SVG. So it gets inherited on the ellipse, but we don't actually set it on the ellipse. So we set stroke dash array. And um, we need to have 38 dots in half an ellipse. So we have uh, we need to have 38 dots in half an ellipse length. So half the ellipse length, uh, this is going to be the half perimeter. And this is going to be half the perimeter, so 0.5 times the perimeter. And the perimeter of an ellipse is quite difficult to get, which may seem surprising because, you know, for a circle, that's easy. It's easy to get the perimeter. But for an ellipse, it's surprisingly difficult. So I'm just going to write the formula here. And it's a bit long, but fortunately, it's not that difficult to remember. And minus square root here. 
minus square root of this product, which fortunately is symmetrical. So um, that makes it easier to remember. A plus D times B. But you can also always look it up. So yeah. Uh, so this is going to be uh, zero and uh, we interpolate this half perimeter over 38 because we want to have 38 dots. So now we got the dotted lines. And now for half of these, are, we're going to put um, the continuous lines over them. So we create a group. And on this group, we set stroke dash ray. So we override the one on the SVG. So we set stroke dash array. And we set it to P. And we create three more copies. Um, and they're pretty much um, the same as here, except we don't actually set a transform for all three of them, but only for the two that needed. So var t here, and we only set it if nc is different from zero. So. Otherwise, we set this uh, t to null, and this is going to mean that uh, we don't actually have a transform set. So let's see how this looks. So what we don't like here, again, the decimals. So we're going to get rid of those. And also, these transforms repeated, because we have transform rotate 120 here, transform rotate 120 here, and I don't like this kind of stuff. And you may be wondering why not set these from the CSS? Well, this is because uh, Edge doesn't yet support CSS transforms on SVG elements. So this means that if we were to set those from the CSS, this thing wouldn't work in Edge anymore. So that's the problem. Now, again, get rid of the decimals here. So this is starting to look pretty good. Um, except we need um, a different stroke for um, the continuous lines. And it's the one we have here. So we're going to set this on the group. And um, G. And one more thing. You see that the lines aren't exactly positioned as they are here. But the simplest way to fix this is to add a transform and rotate by half a turn. And this is done. All right, now for the circle um, in the back and the core, we're going to use just one circle element. and. This is going to be the first thing because we want it in the back underneath everything else. Circle, and we give it a radius. Um, and we also give it a stroke width. And this is going to be um, this. And now we need to set uh, the proper values for the circle, for the fill and the stroke. I think this was it. And the stroke, let's see it. What was this? So yeah, we have the result we've been after. And uh, if we look at the generated code here. So yeah, there is not much else that could be compacted here except for the transforms moved into the CSS. But as I've said, Edge doesn't yet support CSS transforms on uh, SVG elements. 
but otherwise there's not much else that can be compacted here. So yeah, this is it.